Hello there, everyone. Uh, what's happening? Welcome on into another one of the Stephen Lee podcasts. I actually haven't recorded one of these for like six days. I know. I know. I'm, it's shocking. Stefan, you've got a long-running podcast that you should be uh, putting all of your effort into every single day. All right? Actually should, though. Uh, I, I was I was memeing there. I've, I've done, like, six episodes. But the last episode was absolutely wonderful. We had the one and only Yamverse on. Truly enjoyed that. Um, best guest so far, JK Lol. All my guests are amazing, all right? I love you, True. Okay? Uh, no, but I thought it was fantastic. Really got to have, like... I always wanted to have a good conversation with Yamverse about this DJ stuff. And um, realistically, man, I've, I barely get to talk to the guy other than on stream. And... Uh, I don't know if you've ever been in a Twitch stream before. You probably have if you're listening to this, because most likely you know um, about streaming, because that's why you're here, maybe. Um, but the way that you communicate on that is is chat to a live reaction, right? That And it's always one way or the other, because Yanvers is obviously a streamer as well. So I'm either in his chat, and he's talking to me, or he's in my chat, and I'm talking to him. So it's now we're just back and forth with our voices. Um, unless we're playing games and that, you know, but we're not necessarily sitting there, you know, talking about DJ stuff all the time whenever, uh, you know, we're popping off and shooting zombie heads. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just one of, one of those things. But no, it was great. It was really good stuff, and thank you for the reception for it. A lot of the people were super excited to have Yamverse on, and, and uh, yeah, it was the longest one we've done as well. It was over two hours. Two fucking hours, man! Uh, that's, a, that's a long podcast for me. Um, I do have four and a half hours of me and Greg just completely shooting the shit, and I do need to edit that, but oh my god, dude, it, it's like an ominous... Um, I uh, know. Uh, how do you say that word? Ominous. Ominous. Uh, <laughs> like just pile of words, man. Because there's so much shit in there. Um, that uh, <laughs> I think some of it's probably not gonna get through. So uh, we'll see how it is. But I'll, I'll get through it. I'll get through it eventually. Um, now obviously I haven't um in like actually sorted out more guests properly. I know there's an interest, but I need to actually just pull my finger out and actually do something about it because I. I feel like, um, I don't know, if I wait too long, it starts to dwindle, like, interest and stuff, and also, like, my motivation to do it, like, I'm one of these people that, like, has so much motivation to do something in the beginning, um, then I, then I start it, and I'm kicking ass doing things, and then something else captivates my attention, and I'm gone, I, I just, that's just how my mind works, dude, I think, like, the thing is, though, is streaming is, like, the longest thing I've actually done that I've been interested in, um, so maybe we can still have podcasts, it can be the next thing, um, but, yeah, like, recently, dude, I literally, I just can't sleep, like, I don't know what it is about being a degenerate and having a terrible sleep schedule, but they seem to be super connected, man. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't exactly know, like, uh, if there is a connection. I mean, yes, there is, Stephen. Um, but no, um, I keep going to bed and just laying there um, and being like, bro, my mind is just so active. Why am I wasting this? You know, like, that's what I feel like. Like, why am I just trying to shut myself down? Um... When I, like, I want to do stuff. So what I've ended up doing is, like, learning languages. Um, but the thing is, is I don't... I couldn't choose just one language. I'm such a flippant person, dude. It's unreal. So what I did is I got Japanese, Russian, and French. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to be speaking to you in Japanese, Russian, and French, of course, uh, within a couple weeks, evidently. Um, but no, it's it's really fun. Um, I've also been watching a whole bunch of, like, Japanese documentaries. Um, dude, that place looks absolutely remarkable. Um, it's it's mainly about, um, like, documentaries on the nature of Japan, um, which I think is super interesting. Uh, there's just such a, a different type of nature and landscape. Like, all the, the rice paddies, uh, like, how the, like, super sloped land. Um, and then, like, there's all these, like, they, they really utilize water there um, for, like, growing, like, koi, um, as well as, like, the fish the koi. As well as just, like, um, you know, um, to have inside their homes, they have, like, a little water thing. And it's super interesting how it all works. Um, but, yeah, it's, like, the secret garden of something or other. Um, like, some, some Japanese village name is what it's on YouTube called. Uh, it's really good. Like, I, I, I was really for it. Um, and uh, last night, I also saw another documentary that was on Vice. And they were talking about uh, how... COVID-19, COVID-19, COVID sorry, sorry, uh, <laughs> I can't, see, whenever I say that, that's the first thing that comes into my head, is that fucking mad pastor cunt, uh, in America, shouting out, I bid you go, or oh, whatever the fuck he says, dude, oh, an absolute mad lad, um, 
Yeah, so basically COVID-19 has forced a lot of people to want to get away from the cities, as you can imagine, because there's a lot of people there. Um, And it's actually reviving the countryside of Japan, because that's one of the biggest things about Japan is the fact that uh, the population is going down. I didn't realize how significant it was. It's hundreds of thousands of people every year are either dying or leaving Japan, which is crazy, um, just because it gets such an older generation um, that's going on there. Um, and of course, everyone lives in the cities. But for the first time since 2013, um, Tokyo has had more people leave than enter uh, or come to stay uh, this year. Or was it last year? I can't remember. It was probably last year Yeah, because the documentary was uh, 21. Not 2020, sorry. At the very end. So, yeah, it's super interesting stuff. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> basically, I went to look for the pause button on my recording thing on OBS, and it wasn't there. And I was like... Yo, what? What? I can't pause the podcast? Uh, but it turns out that, uh, yeah, if you put the settings... Oh my god, dude, my entire OBS. Like, OBS is open broadcaster software. That's what I use for streaming. Um, it's basically like... I don't know, it's a, it's a program that captures the screen for you. So whether you're playing a game and it captures your voice and the camera and stuff. It's, it's Everything's together within the package. Package. Um, so, yeah, like, I was using that. But um, I had this setting on because... Um, everything got reset, uh, so I had to rebuild all of my game scenes and stuff again. Um, it was actually a good story about that, but I'll tell you something. Um, and, uh, yeah, there was no pause button because one of the settings was on same as stream instead of, like, indistinguishable quality, uh, which basically, for some reason, if you're recording on, uh, super high quality, you can't pause it. Uh, but yeah, here we are! Uh, it worked out! So we're fine, we're back! Hello! Hello! Oh my god, it's been such a long time. Uh, but yes, uh, my OBS broke. It, like, had to all be reset because of my plugins. Um, I was adding some plugins and it just, it, w- it wouldn't, I don't know, something happened and it just wouldn't launch OBS anymore. And then I deleted all the, the plugins, but it still wouldn't work. Um, but yeah, eventually what I had to do is I had to delete all the temporary files, um, and then I opened it back up, and uh, everything was reset. Um, and I was like, oh, shit. So heavy F in the chat for that. But I actually was able to click, like, scene, uh, like scene import, which is... Uh, it's like, I don't know, like, as scenes are, you know, if someone's, like, face is big on a screen and then it goes on to, like, the front page, so it's just a regular, like, uh, showing of the desktop and then you can jump to a game or whatever. Like, the different scenes that you get. Um, if you know what streaming is, you probably understand what that is, but some people might not, right? Um... Yeah, lol, well, all of those got deleted, um, but I found, uh, I clicked import, and it searched my computer for the same file type, and it found these ancient scenes that I used to use about a year and a half ago. So I downloaded them, man, and it was super nostalgic. I was seeing, like, all of my old scenes that I used to have, like, uh, when I stayed in Glasgow. Uh, actually, even before that, man, some of it was from when I first started streaming. It was really weird. Um, but yeah, so I took some of that, um, I actually realized, like, some of the designs were actually pretty cool. Um, I suppose, well, obviously, like, I mean, I made them, so, you know. Uh, but, no, like, I think I, um, I was getting bored, I'm sorry, I'm just currently pouring my coffee. Uh, I was getting bored of, uh, how my stream was looking right now, like, uh, like, just... I don't know, I just felt like there wasn't much character going on with it. So when I when I actually jumped onto those old scenes, it kind of felt like I was reviving something. And there, there's like little things that I just forgot about. Like I have around my webcam, like a kind of embossed uh, like shadow, you could say, an embossed shadow. And it just makes the camera pop out so much more. It's really nice. Um, and I forgot I had that. And it just, yeah, so now I've got that back. And even little things like transitions between uh, scenes. Like, I always just had it so it was a cut. But it actually looks quite nice. If you just uh, have a little, like, uh, it's called a, a luma wipe. I, I basically just, like, kind of, like, uh, like slide through slide through the scene. It looks cool. Um but yeah, so my friend, who had just had a COVID test, came up and visited me um, the other day there. Absolutely amazing to get to actually talk to someone, bro. Um, shout out to Ian. Absolute lad. Uh, basically what happened is he was working down here, and his van was needing repaired, I believe. Um, and he had like two and a half hours to kill, uh, and had nowhere to go. And it was absolutely pushing down. And so he, he called me up a messenger and was like, yo, um, 
Well, I was t- saying to the boys I was coming down here, do you live in Campbelltown still? It's like, fuck yeah, bro. So he, he came on up, and it was so nice, actually. It's the first time I've ever had someone, like one of my mates here. Honestly, like, look, I keep trying to record this podcast, right? And my mind is just like... I don't know, man. I think it's because usually I have had a coffee before I start recording. But right now, I'm just like... Just, oh, God, what's going on, dude? Oh, dude, I, um... I fucking was walking down my stairs, right? Uh, <laughs> this is insane. This is literally about 20 minutes ago. I was walking down my stairs, right? Just going, doo, 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 and I had my socks on and uh, just a hoodie and jeans. Just like, just hanging out, you know? I got to like the fifth bottom stair and I slipped. Like, my socks are quite fluffy. They're made from, like, merino wool. Um, like, they're, like, proper winter socks. Um, and I slipped, right? So, like, I was just literally horizontal in the air all of a sudden. However, because I am an absolute beast, Tarzan motherfucker, I, uh, grabbed the banisters and was able to hold myself up with my arms. Um, and, like, not die. And I was like, fuck me, man! This is, like... I actually came in clutch having some upper body strength uh, because I've always like uh, thought it's essential to be able to pull yourself over stuff. Um, like uh, I actually find that crazy. Like I, I've Richard and I, like my big brother, we've always uh, been into doing like pull ups and push ups and like weightlifting and stuff. But like pull ups mainly, um, and I thought it was I, I was flabbergasted that so many people couldn't do pull ups. Um, like I didn't, I just took it for granted that I could um, because like I grew up climbing trees and shit, you know, that was just, like, part of, you know, like, uh, be- being, being a boy, and then as I grew older, being part of a man is, you know, working out and stuff, so, yeah, I was absolutely, uh, coming in clutch right there, dude, like, able to, it was just weird, like, I literally just went, whoop, and I just grabbed on it, and I was like, whoa, hey, you know, I was so exhilarated, actually, like, you know, never, like, like, you do fall over, or something like that happens, and, like, just, your entire body just goes, whoop, like a big massive jolt of energy. It felt like that. So, yeah, it was mental, mate. Um, but yeah, like, uh, I, I always find it crazy that people can't, like, jump over fences and shit. I always think, like, what if a zombie apocalypse is happening, right? What if, um, I don't know, there's a tsunami, right? What if there is someone chasing you, right? And you can't pull yourself over a fence? Like, what the fuck, man? I could not live with that. Like, I would have to work until I can be sure I can do five pull-ups at once, at least, you know. Um, I, I don't know, man. I just find that crazy. Uh, I, I, d- I don't even think I'm that necessarily strong. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm probably the strongest I've ever been, but I'm not like a... Like a crazy strong man. Like Richie, my big brother, he's way stronger than me, dude. Uh, he's got that, like, proper, like, worker strength and sh- shit, dude. Um... I'm so we scumbag that does weightlifting, you know. <laughs> but you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just weird, like not being able to pull yourself up. So, but I, I came in clutch. I pulled it off. It was amazing. Oh, I was talking about Ian, wasn't I? So, right, yeah, Ian came up, and um, we, it was actually some of it was really good, like potential podcast material. I need to have um different microphone setup for people that uh I can like kind of well, whether I travel to them or they happen to be here. Um, then we can actually record something. Um, I don't know. I know that with a Blue Yeti, you can have this omnidirectional uh, way. So it's like um, the microphone can pick up via all sides, um, which is really smart. Um, and uh, like this one right here, I think this is called a cardioid mic. Um, so the only way that you can hear me is if I talk into this side. Well, I mean, I, at least hear me clearly, because if I start going around back here, this is like behind the microphone. And obviously that's not too wonderful, is it? But if I come back the way around here, then it's all clear again. Um, but with an omnidirectional, directional microphone then you can be standing or sitting on either side and it will pick you up quite nice but obviously it's not you're not talking directly into a microphone which is always better for a listening experience like you want to have um like both parties or uh, however many people are there you want them all to have the same kind of levels um so that you know someone there isn't one guy like yeah, no, no, I understand that. Yeah, no, that was absolutely great. Like, oh, then, and then another one's like, "So, what's what's happening?" Because it's just it's really jarring. It, pu- it puts it off. Um, so yeah, I don't really know exactly how I want to set it up. I don't think I'm there yet. I think also with COVID and stuff, it's not an essentiality. Is that a word? An essentiality. I think it sounds like a word, right? I'm making it a word. An essentiality. Um, but yes, I, I don't. I don't think it is right now because of the fact that uh, you know, I won't be having people up here anyway. Um, that was just a fluke uh, that Ian, Ian appeared. But like, that was actually one of the first things I thought of. Like, oh, I can record a podcast with him. You know. So, but whenever. 
I mean, whenever lockdown gets lifted again, it's like till mid February now again. Um, we can, I can potentially go to Glasgow with some mics and uh, do some podcasts with the boys. I think that would be really fucking cool. Um, just because in person, it's always just like there's always a big, uh, a much different vibe. You've got to work with uh, the way we are right now um, in order to you know produce content. Like you just gotta, you gotta deal with it. You gotta, you gotta uh, improvise, adapt, and overcome. Pardon me. Uh, like uh, Bear Grylls says, right? So, yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it was really good to get to talk to him, though, and he brought some absolute scran. I got potato scone and sausage roll, uh, some some coffee, and uh, some McCoy's cheese and onion. Absolute fucking reality, man. Um, so, yeah. And the cats freak the fuck out, though, dude. They, they've only ever seen, like, me or the family, like, people they're really close to. Um, so, when Ian came in here, yeah, they were freaking out, though. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. Like the the cats are literally scaredy cats right now. Um, they're doing that mental thing right now though. Like uh, whatever they go super hyper and like Mackie's jumping around. He's like the wee small one. He's jumping around the back of the couch. I'm going like like th- that weird way. Oh, uh, it's mental, dude. Um, the thing is though, it's so cute. Like I always I keep waking up and they're both um just lying on top of me. But Mackie does this thing right where he gets his paw and he hits my bottom lip. He doesn't scratch it. He just hits my bottom lip to tell me to get up. Like, wake up, feed me dick, feed me dick, you know? But then if I hide underneath the covers, then eventually he gives up. And uh, he just lies down, and it means that I can actually keep sleeping. Because, <laughs> like, he tries to wake you up at stupid times. Um, I don't know. Like, it's because of their schedule was different whenever they stay with mum and dad. Because, like, they got up about five or six or whatever. Like, uh, you know, I'm kind of, like, going to bed at that time. So, you know, it's a bit, very different. Oh, so which one of you cunts bought GameStop? Any, anyone bought GameStop yet? Um, if you have, um, awfully, awfully proud of you. Uh, if you managed to make some stonks out of it. Um, if not, then hold the line! Hold! You got you got, it, got to hold, right? Um, oh, my God, dude. I, I have seen so many people complaining that they're losing money um so many people like obviously memeing um are i just i don't have any sympathy for people that are actually losing money in this um it reminds me so much of the crypto boom where uh everyone just throws money at a thing because it's suddenly popular um it, it, it is what it is, man. Like, uh, remember the crypto boom? Like, was it 2017? I'm pretty sure it was 2017. Um, right in the beginning, like January. I'm, I'm fairly certain it was then. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, I know some people, uh, like my, some one of my friends, they, <laughs> their friends have apparently made a lot of money off of it. And like, I can understand why, because it's like the biggest pump and dump of our generation. It's unreal. Um, but, and the fact that Elon Musk is involved as well is just ridiculous. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fascinating to see like how easily the markets, like the financial markets can be manipulated. It's like suddenly people are realizing that money is just a, a commodity. Like people only give it anything. Well, well, it's a commodity only because we say it is. Um, like, it only has any power because of the fact that people say uh, that it does, you know. This is not still saying, like, a 20 quid note. Like, um, uh, I-, I promise 20... 20- 20 pounds worth of grain to the bearer or so some shit. It still says that. It's like, who the fuck, whenever you hand over... 20 quid. You're not thinking, oh, this guy now owes me 20 fucking, you know, pounds of uh, grain or rice or whatever the fuck. I don't know. What did even people sell by them? Was it gold? I don't know. I mean, like, there is gold behind it, but you wouldn't say 20 pounds, would you? It'd be 20... I don't know. 20 pounds seems a lot of fucking gold. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know how that all works. But, like, no one thinks about that anymore. It's just paper and coins, you know. Paper and metal. That, that's all that you think of. But it used to be very different back in the day, didn't it? Um, but, yeah, it's interesting how that all come together. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think, uh, like, watching it, I would like to see how it all unfolds now, man, because it's kind of in a situation where we're kind of just, like, seeing who is actually serious and who just joined it to make money. Um, and the thing is, man, is, like, Dogecoin and all that shit, like, how that's flying up. Like, there'll be people that um are, are, are maybe like wanted to push for it in the beginning saying oh this is hilarious let's stick it to the man you know fuck fuck big government you know fuck those millionaires fuck those rich people and then all of a sudden they're realizing that their coins are worth like a hundred grand and they're like ooh oh my god uh ooh. and then yeah so i think a lot of people are going to start selling or they probably already have but the thing is though man is can you still sell you've seen how like they've actually shut down the um the traders like, um, what do you call them again? Um, it's, it's the traders. Exchanges. Um, they've shut them down. 
which is unreal, but it kind of makes you realize that like all of this shit is just kind of controlled uh, by people that are do not have your best interests at heart. You know, the house always wins. The house can shut down whenever they like. However, there has been a lot of um like uh, legal shit that's been going on, right? I've only ever seen headlines and like stuff on Twitter, but um, it is interesting. Like I haven't been delving deep into it because. Yeah, I just, I don't have that that motivation. I was going to say I don't have that time. I think I do. I, th- that's the main thing I do have. However, I fucking tell you, right? A time you enjoy spending is not wasted time. I like enjoying spending my time watching Vikings and streaming and playing Valorant and talk. Oh, Jesus. And talking shit with the boys. God, did you hear that mic? That mic clip right there? Don't worry, man. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll pull that right the way down, right? I'll pull it down so that no one hears that. It's just like pure silence right there. For me, that just went whoop whoop. It kind of sounds like um, like you know, like how dubstep, like before it, before it drops, it goes, bum, 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 like it kind of goes, whip, blah, 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 blah. and then it goes mental. Remember dubstep, mate? The fucking yas, man. Yamars and I were talking about that, obviously, right? And uh, like, whatever happened to trap music as well? Like there was legit, like every music, uh, like this theme tune. Under the Sun had some mad trap remix. It was amazing. Uh, but I don't know what the fuck ever happened to that. Maybe it still happens and I just, uh, I don't know, I, I unsubscribe from it because I don't watch it anymore. Um, but it is what it is. Dude, my right headphone keeps, uh, like, make, making this noise um, of, like, kind of crackling. And I know exactly why. Because my headphones are shit! Uh, like, yeah, my headphones are, like, falling apart at this point. Um, it's just, uh, it's really annoying, because I love them. They're, they're really on point, but, uh, I don't know. Does anyone have any recommendations for actual good, like, uh, over-the-ear headphones? Um, I've got, like, uh, the wee earbuds, but, like, I mean the proper big ones. Um, something that's not too expensive, so, like, under, under 150, uh, would be wonderful. Um, and then maybe I can get it for next month or something, we'll see. Um, however, I have literally just been putting all of my money into stocks. Like, um, I think it's not not GameStop <laughs> or Nokia, uh, but like proper stocks. Uh, I suppose they're still proper stocks, it's not as if they're not. Um, but stocks that won't be affected by all this, and like, I was doing it since November. Um, and I was actually talking to a friend, I didn't realise he actually owns a Discord server that's purely dedicated to stock trading. Um, and we just happened, I just happened to mention it when he, uh, came in. Well, no, what happened? I think it was actually during the GameStop stuff, um... And he just mentioned that people were going crazy. And then I started to talk about the fact that I was doing stock trading for a while since November. Well, no, it's not for a while, really. Um, and, yeah, he invited me in and stuff. And I've actually been able to 100% my portfolio. Folio. So I've been able to double my money from stocks. Um, it's not a lot of money, um, but I have been able to do it. And I think that is, uh, like, he was really impressed by that, especially with the fact that I've only been on since November. Like, I, I think I... Uh, I need to credit my little brother. Like, he's really uh, switched on. Um, Adam Stock is his thing now on, on Twitter. I'm fairly certain it's Adam Stock. Uh, I'll just double check that. But yeah, he's like, he's really popping off, man. Like, the, the wee man is actually focusing on something uh, instead of like uh, bitches and money. Uh, well, I suppose it's still money, right? It's still money. But it's not like. Um, I don't know. It's not. <laughs> it's not money. Like, yeah, I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put money in, like into a chain, man. Like, he's just like you know. He's he's actually sorting out his future with proper stocks and stuff, and that's really cool, man. Because I kind of did that a little bit um, with uh, crypto and stuff, I suppose. Um, but yeah, man, it's just it's interesting to see that my little brother's not been too much of a fanny anymore. Um, which is uh, oh, fucking good. Good crack, Adam. I'm just double checking this. Adam stock. Adam stock. I'm pretty sure. Um, but yeah, like, it's quite good to like be part of these discords that are, uh, is it Adam G stock? My, oh, it's, oh, it's G stock. It's called G stock. Um, I've got it, mate. Um, there you are. Yeah, uh, he's doing well though, man. Um, I'm glad that he's, uh, he's popping off. And uh, I think the main ones that he's into is like CBBT and Couve. Um, which is uh, the ones I'm in as well. Um, th- there's a lot of really smart stocks out there that you can you can easily make money on. Um, the thing is though is like I kind of I'm slight risk um, just because of the fact that um, I don't know I actually do want to see some returns. So it's a lot of penny stocks and stuff that I invest in. Um, however, obviously, if you want to have a massive long term situation. Um, penny stocks are probably not the best shout, but at the same time, if you're uh, and if you trust the company, then you can really like uh, change how much money you have over long term if it was a penny stock. Because if you get in at like three pence, even 30 pence, you know, and that goes up to two quid, like you're just like over years or whatever. 
that's a lot better than a two pound stock going to four. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I don't know. Like uh, it really depends on how much you're willing to uh, risk and whatever. Like every single coin that or uh, every single bit of money I have in there. Um, I was willing to lose, but now I'm almost playing with uh, house money just because I've got took my profits and stuff. And like I have had to make some money or even pull out some money prematurely just to like survive and get food and stuff. Um, but it's better than putting it in a bank, if I'm being honest with you. Um, the problem is, is obviously it's not instant. Uh, do you know this is actually shit though. It's not instant withdrawal, but um, it's instant deposit. Now that's always cheeky as fuck, man. Like the fact that I can uh, like uh, from my bank, from my bank card, I can immediately deposit, but I can't immediately withdraw. It's like, uh, dude, I don't know if it's the bank though. I mean, Clydesdale Bank is my bank, and like, I don't know, man. Like, are they, are they uh? Are they actual stonks? Um, probably not. I don't know. Um, they're just like they're the one bank that I've always had growing up. Um, but like, uh, yeah, the, you don't really. I've never experienced any benefit from being a Clydesdale Bank, you know. Uh, but it, it is what it is. Oh, speaking of talking about companies, um, and whatnot. Uh, well, I don't really know companies necessarily. I suppose kind of. Um, basically, I'm just thinking about Bill Burr here, right? And basically, he rips the piss out of companies, but then after that, he then talks about um advice for people. Does anyone? Ask actually want to send in something to Stephen Lee podcast at gmail.com um, I forgot to actually put that out onto any social media except from the podcast and then I don't think I even put it in the description I'm an absolute fucking waste of space what, what, what am I doing what, 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 what am I doing I'm, I'm not I'm not really not helping myself here but yes if you would like to uh, type in uh, any random shite uh, to Stephen Lee podcast at gmail.com please do uh, even if it's absolute drivel even if it's a mad poem even if it's like I, I don't know like some 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 story from your childhood that you thought was hilarious like any funny story or um, advice or anything I love to just like uh, properly get on board with that because like I do that anyway on stream like people are always coming in with some mad jaunt story something's happening um but yeah, I, d I don't know. I think it would be quite cool to have like a, a, like uh, my own space that's recorded like here, the Stephen Lee podcast, where we can do that together. I think that'd be funny. Um, so when I release this, I'm going to actually like make that one of the first taglines is just the fact that I uh, the Stephen Lee podcast at hotmail dot com. Oh, Stephen Lee podcast at gmail dot com. Apparently, people talk shit about Hotmail. What the f Hotmail's got me through so much, man. I like my first ever email. I made a like. I don't know, 11, 12 years ago. I still use that bad boy. I still use that, man. And that, that's Hotmail, you know? And it's actually a .co at UK. Now all of them are .com. I don't even know. Do you get a decision now um, to make it .co at UK? Um, .com does look a lot more cleaner, though, to be fair. Um, so, yeah, if anyone wants to, uh, please just send some absolute drivel in there. It'd be gorgeous. Um, and then I can start talking about it. I was kind of thinking, I need some sections in this podcast so it has some form of actual uh, organization. I was going to say rigidity, but I, I don't know. Is that the right words? Probably. I don't know. Rigidity, like, whenever I think about that word, I think about it having, like, there's, like, handrails um, at certain bits, you know? So, I don't know, though, man. I like fucking, like, living on the edge and, like, almost falling off at all times. The amount of times that I have paused this podcast to, like, actually think about what the fuck I want to say today um, is unreal. I don't know. My mind is in this... Pardon me. Nice. Uh, I never burp on stream. Why do I always burp on Stephen Lee podcast? This happens all the time. I'm sitting here like, <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm making all these fucking like dinosaur noises, man. I need to like pause the video. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know. I need to like kind of have like some kind of thing where. Like, I, I read out something, or I, uh, I, I don't know, like, I, I don't know, I don't know what to do. I need to look at other podcasts, or listen to other podcasts, podcasts I suppose. Um, but I really do like the conversational style, but I'd like it if it was, like, a proper thing where it's still conversational, but it's, uh, you know, more to do with the people that are listening, um, or it's just something more that you can learn from me or something. And also, like, for guests, I was thinking, should there be a question that I ask every single guest? I think that would be kind of cool. Just like something that's like kind of resounding, um, that we could have. Um, I don't want it to be like too philosophical, but like something that's just like interesting, or maybe just like maybe just to ask, um, is there a question you want to ask me? You know, like something something like that that you know takes the uh, 
the pressure off of them being the guest all of a sudden, and then they're the interviewer, you know, that'd be kind of cool. Although I never feel like an interviewer, it's more just like uh, being someone that gets to talk shit. Um, but yeah, it's uh, certainly been full on th- this last week. Uh, it's been super interesting to get to see that, uh, I, I don't know, man, the world comes together in such mysterious ways, doesn't it? Um, and uh, yeah, like I've literally seen so many people, because of the fact that it was Reddit, weaponized autism is something that cannot be defeated on the internet. And I remember my friend Greg saying that um, he has autism, or at least some form of it. Um, it's uh, there's something about that that is just like so powerful, dude. <laughs> and it, like I was like, okay, that actually makes a lot of sense, you know. Um, but yeah, fascinating stuff going on on Reddit right now. Um, I'd like to give a big shout out to um Otto Gyro and his amazing controversial yet brave channel on his Discord. Um, absolutely adore that place. It's fantastic. What a title, controversial yet brave. Like, that, they should, like, see, like, the Tories, and like, all, or, like, UKIP and shit, they should run with that kind of title. I'm just saying. I mean, Otto already sounds like a, like a Tory, right? But he's not a Tory. He's actually a great cunt. Um, but he's like, hello there. Listen to me in my mellow accent. I always remember when he said that. Um, and I always repeat that. He also says, oh, look at the size of that gnat. Uh, he's fucking amazing. Uh, I've got a terrible um, uh, impersonation of him. I just make myself sound super posh. But he's a lot better than that. I, t- I swear down. He's also a streamer. So if you're looking for some absolute posh twat to follow, uh, Otto Gyro is the guy. A- A-U-T-O-G-I-R-O. Now, is it just me or is it a gyro? I thought a gyro is what you get if you're, um, if you're, uh, on the dole. Right, is that not what it is? Like, a gyro is, like, what you get every two weeks. I think that's the case, right? Fuck, I can't remember. I just remember when I first saw his name, I was like, is that what that is? I actually thought he was Scottish, to be fair. Um, but uh, it is what it is. But anyway, I've been playing a lot of Celeste, um, the game on stream recently. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's like a cute little pixel platformer um, that's like actually super difficult. Like you've got to like kind of like combine a whole bunch of moves in order to get to the end, like a, a, in order to like get a checkpoint and stuff. Um, really fun though. Like su- super, super enjoying it. Um, I don't know, man. Like switching up my games that I'm playing instead of it just like always being Euro Truck and stuff, I think it's so important important for me to like have interest and actually um not wanting to go live i think it's more whenever people aren't talking as much in the in the chat um i find it difficult to keep interest in a game um because i am a very much an interactive person i love speaking to people um i I, that's what i live for when it comes down to streaming like that talking to people having interaction having good banter getting to really explore thoughts and see and just get to know people that's what i'm there for um and whenever like uh chat's quiet and it has been quiet recently um i have been streaming at stupid times though so it's my own fault um it's hard it's just like i don't know like i'm starting to feel like i'm i'm losing interest in wanting to play games that aren't interesting so i'm glad i found celeste like it's a cute little game um that i can actually you know focus on i tried to play dark souls fuck that game dude like actually dark souls is so rough for me dude i was spoiled um by the witcher like the witcher is a. Uh, I mean, it's a super pretty game, and the movement is so clean, and but it's so forgiving whenever you're attacking. Like, whenever you swing at someone, you're going to hit them. On Dark Souls, the hitboxes are so precise that uh, you have to make sure that every dodge and every slice is perfect. And, uh, yeah, I ain't vibing on that. But maybe, maybe I'll go back to it. I don't know. Um... But yeah, it's uh, it's it's it was good fun to try it at least, you know. And we actually the problem is though is like people always come in that actually know what they're talking about, um, with Dark Souls, and I'm just sitting there like, oh god, dude, like, cause you know, like. I'm shit talking their game, <laughs> like really talking shit. The guy's like, "Yeah, I've had about a thousand hours on this game, yeah, you know, I love it." Uh, and I'm just sitting there like, "What the fuck is this movement? Look at this!" Like I'm just getting so wide, dude. I mean, for no reason other than I'm just bad. Um, but of course, I can't admit that as a streamer and as a Scotsman and as a young ignorant fool. Um, boomer uh to be fair young ignorant boomer um i can't i just can't uh, admit that i'm wrong it just it can't happen you know um but yes i do not have much else to talk about i do not think um hopefully my mom and dad sell their house uh in the next few days actually no no i oh i know what the fuck happened 
Fuck you, lawyers! Honestly, fuck lawyers, man. Like, my mum and dad have had such a hassle. Um, with uh, They thought the, the house was going to be sold on the 7th of January, right? That was Everything was sorted out. It was all perfect. All the uh, the money was apparently there. Everything was going to be, like, grand. Uh, and just go go through and be fine. And then it turns out there was some discrepancy in the garage uh, for the people that were buying um, my mum and dad's house uh, in Edinburgh. Like, their house, there was something wrong with the garage. Because there was a chain of money. Someone's buying the Edinburgh house. The Edinburgh house is buying my mum and dad's house. So, like, there's a chain of money there. Right, it is what it is. got to wait until they sell their house before my mum and dad can sell theirs. And it turns out there was something wrong with the garage. And the, the people were like, oh, it's, oh, it's terrible. But... Because of COVID, um, they couldn't fix it immediately. They couldn't just like, like uh, I don't know, go and sort out the paperwork or meet or whatever. Um, so it's taken a long time. And it turns the fuck out that the people who are buying the Edinburgh House's lawyer is on holiday. Like, what the fuck, dude? So, like, they just left it. They didn't, like, get another lawyer to go and sort it out or whatever. Um... They took ages, and then eventually, once uh, mom and dad have found that out, um, they've now got another employee that's trying to sort it out. It's like, for fuck's sake, dude, it's like almost a month of uh, postponement, you know, and I feel bad for mom and dad, because they're having to live in, like, this rented accommodation right now. It is apparently, like, a nice little pretty wee lodge thing, um, but, you know, they, they've they been kind of uprooted, like, their their home that they built over, say, I mean, how many years, man? Like, uh, however old my little brother is, 18 years, 18, 19 years. Of building this house and it's empty and an em- and then and blah, blah, an empty shell an empty shell um of you know like uh, past memory and it's kind of it's heartbreaking that you know and they've just been like kind of shoved away for a month so yeah hopefully it all comes through in the next few days but yeah fuck lawyers guys fuck lawyers um <laughs> you know I'm saying that I bet at some point I'm gonna desperately need a lawyer and be like oh I love you lawyers um but yeah thank you um very much for listening to my absolute mad rambles this has been probably one of the biggest rambles I've ever actually uh, uh, produced is that what you say produced producing some rambles that's right um, t- tomorrow, um, I'll try and get a guest on. It'll be Sunday tomorrow. Um, and I think, uh, I don't know. I'm going to put out some feelers. I'm going to see who is available tomorrow and see if, uh, I can, I can get some, someone else on. Um, or I completely and utterly <laughs> buckle down and edit the Greg and I podcast. That has to be done, dude. Um, Greg's microphone wasn't the best, but it is decent. Um, but it's not as good as Yam versus. um, or trues, I don't think. Um, but it, it's still good. It's still good content, and it's very much boys, uh, like the lads having some fucking beers and uh, talking shit. So it, it was great fun to have. Um, <laughs> oh god, Greg! Uh, the, th- the fact that it's like four and a half hours as well, man, is unreal. Like I reckon I could edit it down to like three hours, though, to be honest. Um, especially with like uh, some of the filth that was spewing out of us. Um, but no, man, it's been good fun. Uh, I'm really enjoying the podcast. I'm sorry, I just haven't been motivated. I, I mean, not that I haven't been sitting on my arse being like, oh, I wish I had the motivation. I've actually been working on voice projects, streaming, and uh, doing the uh, vocal ID stuff. Like, you know how you, you can uh, give a voice to someone who is voiceless, uh, like their AI machine. Like, you can give a voice to their AI machine so that they can then talk to people in a more uh, personalized way. Like, it's such a beautiful project. I adore it. I really want to talk to them more and see if I can, like, I don't know like, somehow be more affiliated with them, because I really love that. I think that's such a beautiful idea. Um, I've been doing a lot of that as well. Um, so at least I haven't been absolutely an absolute degenerate, you know? Um, as well as just talking to people and um, obviously having eaten up and stuff. Um, it's nice, dude. It is nice to, like, focus more on myself. Um I'm doing something wholesome, like, uh, I don't know, I think, um, right now, wholesome activities are so much more, um, evident and, like, powerful, just because of the fact that we've been so isolated and taken away from people, like, little happinesses are a lot more difficult to come by, um, like, the little things are, you know, we're losing them right now until we can get back to some form of regularity, um, I suppose if you're a bit more savvy, you could still kind of rediscover or redefine your little things, like whether it be, you know, see- seeing some birds flying over your house or, uh, I, d- I don't know, um, like looking at the stars and connecting and making your own pictures and constellations. Um, even just learning constellations, man. I, I love that shit. It's so cool. Um, but, aye, uh, thank you so much for bearing with me. I will get some good people on. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling my finger out. I'll actually get it. I'll get it done. Talk some good shit with some good people. And, uh, yeah, get some good uploads up. 
thank you for listening to an hour or is this like 40 minutes of me just talking absolute shite uh i think uh, i'm a professional shite talker i love it i mean that's uh if you ever want like an actual job title uh, that's that's the one that's the one you know what i'm saying um so thank you guys so much please do send something into stephen lee podcast at gmail.com it can be anything anything at all i mean i'm i'm suggesting like um so, like some advice you might need even if it's like a troll advice i think that'd be funny um some mad poem some cool story anything and i'll read it out dude and we can have like a proper section um also uh my friend swoop um He's one of the greatest sarcastic cunts I know, but he is someone I adore. I absolutely love that man. We've met in London, um, and he supported me significantly over my streaming career. Uh, I mean, I say career, I make a lot. Um, and yeah, I really do. Like, both financially as well as just uh, mentally. Like, uh, absolute babe. I love that guy. He said that I should get some timestamps uh, for topics in the podcast, and I wholeheartedly agree. Um... I need to, uh, yeah, really buckle down and get my head in gear and just uh, make this podcast something bigger um, because I think it has a lot of potential. And, yeah, I feel really good doing this. It, it's uh, it's something that's different um, than streaming, and it's just fun. Um, so, yeah, please send in some absolute madness uh, to there. That, that would be, be kind of cool. Uh, Stephen Lee Podcast at gmail.com. Anyway, that's me off. Um, Yeah. Uh, don't die. Enjoy yourself. Slange of that. And uh, don't be a cunt. And um, bye bye. <laughs> what a shit podcast, Stefan. Oh my god, dude.